Hello guys and welcome. So first of all, a small caveat. If you don't know any of the tools of few and I'm gonna be using today's video, well then as always check out my YouTube channel because there I give lectures on every single tool, all fear they use. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're supposed to prove that Android 5 is congruent to N modulo 10 for all Ns that are integers for all uh, Ns. Well, in the sense of integers, which is you know, the Z. Whatever. Yeah, so this will be an important fact for the well, future freehand videos to follow, for the future videos from the uh, freehand number theory series. Yeah, so, well, first of all, what does it mean for n to the fifth um, to be congruent to n modulo 10? So maybe let me write it down right here. So n to the fifth is congruent to n modulo modulo. And well, what does it mean for them? Well, it means that n to the fifth, uh, n to the fifth and n both have the same remainder upon division by ten. Yeah, they both leave the same remainder, remainder when uh, performed a long division by ten on. And so, if they have the same remainder, then by the definition, it has to mean that actually ten will uh, divide the difference, which is n to the fifth. Minus and all and minus and to the fifth by I think this one's gonna be positive, so this one is gonna be much much more you know, interesting. Uh, might be not interesting. This is gonna be much more easier to deal with. So, well, what does it mean for a number to be divisible by ten? Well, it means that it ends with a zero, but I think it's gonna be really tough to prove that it's gonna be ending with zero. I mean, <laughs> you see, it's uh, fun because um, finding the letters is usually just comes down to um, reducing some number modulo 10 and here we, uh, <laughs> we don't really have much uh, space to do this, we don't really have much tools to do this. Anyway, well, what, is, what, what does it also mean for a number to be divisible by 10? Well, it means that it is both divisible, I mean, it's divisible by all of the prime factors of 10 for sure. So what it means is that this is divisible by 2 yeah, so 2 divides into the fifth minus n, and also that it is divisible by 5. So 5 divides into the fifth minus n, those are the only two prime uh, divisors, only two prime factors of 10. Yeah? So I think it would be a nice idea to try and, for simplicity, uh, prove. Well, that first of all, maybe uh, 2 divides into the fifth minus n, and then 2 dividing uh, n to the fifth minus n. So, well, I would like to first of all try and deal with uh, this guy right there, because it was going to be actually pretty easy to kill off. You see, there is a nice, uh, there is this nice theorem called Fermat's Little Theorem that I have a video on on my channel somewhere out there. And so, Fermat's Little Theorem. So maybe I will write it here. Mm. I would like to actually write it in color, because why not? So, Fermat's Lille theorem tells us that whenever we have a prime p and any integer a, a to the power of, maybe I will write it in yellow, why not? It's gonna be fancy. a to the power of that prime p minus 1 will always be congruent to 1 modulo that prime p. And so what does this mean is that, mm, well, as long as modulo uh, works the way it should be working, we can just go on and multiply both sides of this congruence by a, getting a to the power of p itself will be congruent to just a modulo p for prime a and an integer, uh, for a prime p and an integer a. But well, this is exactly what we're having here. Because well, what does it mean for 5 to divide into the fifth minus n? Well, if you go on and rewrite this in this modulo notation, this fancy modulo notation, you're, you're gonna get n to the fifth is congruent to n modulo 5. Well, that's exactly the Fermat's little theorem because well, 5 is a prime and n. I think it is an integer, I mean, it's given by the proper condition, so it should be an integer at least. Yeah. So now the interesting part. What about 2 divided into the fifth minus n? Well, 2 is a prime, but 5 is not 2. So I think the trick with the firm as a theorem will not work here. So I would like to use something else. Well, we know 
that the expression n to the power of 5 minus n is kind of expressible, we can rewrite it, as n multiplied by n to the power of 4 minus 1. Okay, but this expression we can rewrite as n multiplied as n squared minus 1 multiplied by n squared plus 1. But this, on the other hand, we can once again rewrite as we, this thing right there we can write as n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n plus 1 multiplied by n squared plus 1. And well, let me now group the terms in uh, a sensible order so we can see what I'm talking about better here. So n minus 1, then n, then n plus 1 and then n squared plus 1. So you see guys, those terms right here, I mean those uh, parts of this product, what chalk should I get? Uh, I see purple, <laughs> that was fancy, absolutely. So those three are consecutive numbers, yeah? So my, I mean n minus 1 is some first number, then n is a consecutive number to the n minus 1, and then n plus 1 is a consecutive number to the n. That's perfect because, well, if we have three consecutive numbers, there is no way that none of them will be you know, divisible by two. Absolutely, because well, a consecutive number is, for example, you see, let's say, two n minus one, yes, so this is an odd number, then after that will come two times n, and then after that will come two times n plus one. So let's say here we have an odd number, after an odd number always comes an even number, and after an even number always comes an, an odd number. Or maybe n minus 1 was uh, not odd, but even, let's say. And so then we would get 2 times n, then we would get 2 times n plus 1, then we would get 2 times n plus 2. So we have two even numbers. But well, one thing is for sure, at least one of those numbers is divisible by 2. And actually, uh, it would be sufficient uh, to show that we have you know, two consecutive numbers here, but we have three of them, so it's even better. Uh, it's possible that it's going to be uh, divisible by four, but we don't really care about it. Yeah, so anyway, this thing right here, divisible by two, two divided, and so what we're getting is n to the fifth minus n divisible by two, n to the fifth minus n divisible by five, and so if this is divisible by, well, all of the prime factors of ten, it also has to be divisible by ten, so I'm just going to draw a huge arrow right there, saying, I mean, kind of pointing on the fact that 10 divides n to the fifth minus n. No idea what I wrote it in purple, but I just like this color. And so we are given the conclusion. Yeah, that's it.